How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about a Full Moon movie. Now, I'm a big fan of Full Moon. They have cheesy horror movies, and if you like puppets in horror movies, they're one of the, the best ways to go to get a bunch of cheesy little puppets running around killing people, and I, I've seen a fair bit of their stuff. Now, Full Moon has lots of long-running franchises, and among those is what we're going to talk about today. It's just something that uh, has been a little outside of my wheelhouse, something I'm not super interested in, but that being said, when talking about Full Moon, this is one of their longest-running franchises, I should at least peek in on the first one, take a look at what it's about, and kind of have a well-rounded Full Moon coverage here. So, today, we're going to be talking about the very first Evil Bong movie. Um, I only have this in a multi-pack. For whatever reason, uh, these are a little bit hard to find in used movie stores in Texas. Who, who, who knows why? Uh, anyway, this movie is from 2006. It is directed by Charles Band, who is the uh, the big boss over at Full Moon. Uh, this movie stars David Weedoff, uh, pa uh, John Patrick Jordan, Mitch Eakins, and of course features uh, appearance from Tommy Chong, because of course you you basically have to do that. Uh, he's like an extended cameo, and he quite literally wanders into the movie at the end and becomes easily the best part. Um, we also get cameos from a ton of other Full Moon characters, and more on those in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, this series, yeah, like I said, it's one of Full Moon's biggest. I don't a hundred percent get it. Um, th this movie it isn't great. It's very, very low budget and small in scale, and it didn't blow me away or anything, but I think there's like 10 of these movies now, like eight mainline entries and then two spinoffs or something versus Ginger Dead Man, and then there's like a Ginger Weed Man movie, which I don't get, but yeah, there there's 10 of these, and I don't know, maybe, I, I mean, I don't smoke, maybe I'm just not the target market and maybe I just don't get it or it could be a case and this is what I think it is magic title syndrome uh, kind of like over on the asylum the two-headed shark or multi-headed shark franchise that's far from the asylum's best shark stuff but you put out a movie called two-headed shark attack people are gonna watch it and then you do three, five, and six, and people are just going to show up. I think there's some cases where it doesn't matter so much what the, the movie itself is. You put out a movie called Evil Bong. You put out a movie called Two-Headed Shark Attack. Magic title. Turn it into a franchise, even if the movie behind it isn't that great. Um, and what I mean by that, I, I never try to be overly critical, but... Boy, is this super minimal. Uh, pretty much all of the movie is two one-room sets. And that's it. And I'm like, are we shooting a movie or are we shooting a Tales from the Dark Side bottle episode, you know? Uh, the jokes are all pretty meh. Just kind of stoners messing around and nothing too clever or hilarious. And the plot gets super repetitive and super simple. And the thing is, I heard, I did a little bit of research for this. What I heard was that uh, Charles Band had the idea for the movie based on just the title, and that within six weeks after having the initial idea, they were already shooting the movie. And I think this was something really small, like a one-week shoot or something. And yeah, you can kind of tell that this movie was made really, really quick. And, and it does show. So yeah, 
a very minimal movie, very small in scale, not hilarious and not the most creative thing ever, but some part of it must have worked. They made nine more of these. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and take a moment to analyze a few things here and there, but again, I won't go all the way to the end or anything like that. Anyway, jumping into the movie, we open up with a song playing while CGI marijuana leaves uh, spin around. This will be used for the opening credits, and this will also be used as a few transitions during the movie. And honestly, it feels like something you'd see out of a weed-themed bowling alley, which I think was actually one of the sequels. But we get this, and the kind of bad thing is we get this instead of an opening kill or an opening scare. Like, you know... Okay, this isn't necessarily the hardest horror movie ever, but still, most horror movies open with an opening kill for good reason. Hooks you into it, but here it's just a song as these, these things spin around. But anyway, we get a nerd going in and renting this room, and when he goes in, he finds that it's actually a studio apartment. An apartment where it's basically all in one big room, which means it's a much easier set to film on, and you can see why they did it for there. Um, but yeah, he basically is just renting for 40 bucks a week a mattress in the corner of this big room, or along the wall in the back there. And I mean, hey, 40 bucks a week, you're a college student, I guess I can see that. The apartment's a big mess, and all of his roommates are stoners, and you get the stereotypes, the, the football guy, the jock, and the uh, sort of the guy who let his parents down. You know, you, you get the elements in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, we also find out that the nerd is studying physics, and I think it's like his minor is in magic, which can you, can you get a degree in magic? I guess so. I thought that he would have to use this skill to, like, defeat the evil bong or something. I thought, like, you know, it'd be like some Lovecraftian ending where he has to open up old text and find the right spell. But no, this whole minor and magic thing is just so he can notice the bong is evil, eventually. Okay, weird plot element, throw that in, whatever. Um, now, how do they encounter the evil bong? They see an ad for an evil bong in a magazine saying, for sale, past owner dead, if you die. You know, it basically has a warning, this is haunted, not responsible for any negative activity. It, it's The ad itself says that it's evil, and they go, that would be cool, let's buy it. One of the dumbest ways to get into a horror movie is just, hey, something evil, let's get it. N nothing more than that. I, whatever. But anyway, once they get the bong, we get kind of the formula. Um, we get sequences where they're all hanging out at the apartment, kind of talking and stoner humor, and you get a few wacky guests showing up like a delivery man, or one of them's grandpa, or some of the times uh, they have these friends that are girls that show up and like the nerd is attracted to one of them. So you get the talky apartment scenes, and then the bong will pull someone who smoked from it into bong world. And bong world is just a strip club. Like, th that's it. I was thinking something a little more creative, but uh, another one-room set. And this might be why the movie got so popular. It, it might just be the magic title, but it also might be you're shooting a scene in a club and it's 2006 and it's a lot harder to use the internet and find adult pictures, so 
you probably got a lot of uh, young adults renting this from the movie store it, just for these club sequences alone, if we're being honest. Um, anyway, in the club, they'll meet a bunch of full moon characters. The ginger uh, dead man is there, Ooga Booga is there, and just basically whatever puppet they had lying around, the jack-in-the-box from Demonic Toys. You know, it's a bunch of cameos. I don't know why they're all there, just from a narrative standpoint, but whatever. Puppets we know and love will make a cameo appearance, and then it's time for the characters to die. And they all die in the exact same way. A stripper will come up with a funny bra, and the bra will have some sort of mouth on it, and it will bite them. The exact same death over and over and over again. Yeah, that's... I don't know. It's really the, the lack of creativity that gets me, you know? You're talking in the apartment, lame jokes, a guest, into Bong World. It's the same set again there, and... They're all going to die the same way and rinse and repeat round in circles. I wish there was something more creative, especially with the fantasy element, you know. I, I just wish, you know, it was something more fantastical. And this might be, you know, lack of time, lack of budget, maybe lack of creativity. I just wish they did something a little more. And to be fair, maybe the sequels did. Not really in super a big hurry to check them out, but I just wish when we had the fantasy element that there was something more to it and sadly very, very repetitive, you know. You don't ever see, I mean, like I think you see like the hallway in the beginning of the movie and there is a little bit of a change to the fantasy world at the end but it's pretty much just two sets, and I'm like, you really feel constrained, you know? And then all the kills being essentially the same thing over and over. Yeah, it's just the repetitive nature. And there are a few other things. Uh, one, when I was doing research, I heard people say that uh, even though the movie's called Evil Bong, that it's technically a hookah, because that's the things with the pipes on it. Again, uh, not my particular culture, I don't know, but that does sound like something worth mentioning. And also, I, I hinted at earlier the humor not being that great. A lot of it is just stoners arguing with each other, and I think some of it is the creative insults, and every now and then one of the cameos would be pretty good, like the grandpa wheels himself in and he starts really yelling at him. You know, okay, some of the insults are fine, but most of the humor just doesn't quite land. Um, one joke that I didn't particularly get, and I guess minor spoiler for the payoff of this joke, but the grandpa talks about how he's remarried, and they kind of amp up, like, who he's married to, and that he's really happy, and they think it's going to be a beautiful woman, uh, but it's an, an old woman. Which, I, I, I don't know, I guess if you are expecting he's rich and you're going to get, you know, like this beautiful young girl just in it for the money. But, I mean, they make a big deal like, oh, Grandpa married an old woman. I mean, he's an old person himself. I don't really see how this is too unexpected. It just seems like the thing that would happen and they're acting like it's unheard of. I don't know. I'm glad he's happy, but... Yeah, I don't get how it's a joke, really. Uh, also, talking about the humor, it's worth mentioning the uh, pogo stick scene. One of the girls is really high, and a guy doesn't really want to pay her attention, and she just starts going nuts and jumping on a pogo stick, and it's a weird scene, and she drops the other F word, and it's pretty crazy, so... Yeah, I don't know, kind of a weird moment in the film. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just really... I don't know, wasn't the biggest fan of the humor here. Maybe maybe other people get it, maybe I'm just missing something. 
But overall, it is just an incredibly simple movie that didn't really surprise me in any way, didn't do anything super creative, and didn't really have me laughing. It's just several times, you know, you're sitting there watching it grind through this weird plot, and I, I don't know, just so repetitive. Uh, but anyway, I know it has an audience, and maybe they get better. If they do get better, let me know, but yeah, not the biggest fan of this one. I do still really like Full Moon, and I think it, as a character, this definitely has an interesting design, and you know, seeing it in the lineup with all the other Full Moon characters, that's cool, but the movie itself, not that great. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, Thank you, you really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you guys want to see more, you can click right there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist. Have a good day now.